All right, so right now we're gonna try this this problem out, okay? It's the data sufficiency in the official GMAP book. Um, okay, number 198, is K plus M less than zero? All right, that's what we're gonna try to figure out. And that's the data that they have there. Um, if you wanna try this one uh, before we do it together, hit the pause button right now, hit pause now, and um, then we'll do it together. All right, welcome back. Now let's do it together. Number one says K is less than zero. All right, now we want to know is K plus M less than zero? The only way K plus M will be less than zero is if either both of them are negative or one of them is negative and has a bigger absolute value than the other one. For example, negative 13 plus 5 would be negative, uh, but negative three plus eight would not be negative, right? So that's what we wanna find out, okay? So number one, going back to number one, we have k is less than zero. So that means k is a negative number. Uh, if k is a negative number, like let's say negative five, but we don't know what m is. m could be positive 10, which negative five plus positive 10 is a positive number, or m could be, a positive 2. Uh, negative 5 plus positive 2 is a negative number. So if all we know is k is less than 0, then we cannot know for sure that k plus m is less than 0. All right? Okay, now let's look at number 2. We have k m is greater than 0. Okay? So how can k times m be greater than 0? That's only possible if both k and m are negative numbers, because a negative times a negative is a positive or if they're both positive numbers, because a positive times a positive is a positive number, right? So if that's all we know, that Km is greater than zero, uh, then we have limited it down to either they're both negative or they're both positive. Obviously, if they're both negative, then we go back to this, then the sum of two negative numbers would be a negative number. However, if they're both positive, then the sum of two positive numbers would be a positive number. So therefore, by itself, number two is not sufficient. All right, now let's try both one and two together. If we know k is less than zero, then we know k has to be a negative number. And then if we know that k times m is a positive number, and we already know from number one that k is a negative number, that means m then has to be a negative number, right? And k times m, if they're both negative numbers, then they, it would be greater than zero. Now, if k is a negative number and m is a negative number, then we go back to the question, k plus m has to be a negative number. All right, uh, that means by themselves, one and two are not sufficient, but together they are sufficient, making c the correct answer. Thank you.